All right, all right. So, hello, everybody. Um, welcome to the We Are Her podcast. Intro. What is this? It's an intro. It's like a, a it's a trailer intro. Yeah. It's a it's a hype to get you excited for season two of the podcast. Um, it's me, Emily Kemp, the host of the podcast, and I'm here with the founder of We Are Her, Stevie. Hi, everyone. Yippee! And we're just gonna have a little chit chat about what you can expect from season two. Um. First of all, let me just say, it feels so good to be back in the studio. We are, it is the, it is the pandemic times. We are living in the, the age of COVID-19. And um, so we've been having to do a lot of our recordings from home, which has been really interesting. And you'll probably hear that on the podcast, like the sound quality is a little bit different. Um, also, my voice is really scratchy because I was at a protest yesterday, screaming a lot of things. And so um, I'm a bit froggy, but. I think we can all maybe identify with that a little bit right now. So bear with me. Um, But yeah, there was a couple of things that we really wanted to talk about. Uh, The first one is that you might notice the podcast has changed names. So we did go from Becoming Her um, and now we are We Are Her, the podcast, just like on brand with the website and all of our social media. Um, Stevie, do you kind of want to talk? talk yeah, a little bit yeah, about what yeah. happened there um yeah I'll, I'll be careful I'm still a little bit salty about it um but really I guess um the title becoming her was already taken by another podcast so we needed to switch due to copyright reasons I guess is the right way to put it but um so we just decided to go with we are her since that was our name yep. and that's already kind of registered with the paperwork we have for being a business mm-hmm. um and an organization so um yeah we were we were upset it was definitely kind of a hit and becoming her was just so dang catchy yeah it was um and like I said I'm still really salty about it so I'm gonna watch my tongue yeah. but um <laughs> <laughs> Me too. I could say a lot of things but I'm not gonna yeah yeah um you know and at the end of the day yeah it's um it is what it is so and it was what's best for us without causing a lot of drama and you know we just decided to be the bigger person yes people yes exactly. Um, but it's still my mug on the cover art of the podcast yes. and everything else <laughs> looks the same so hopefully it shouldn't be too confusing for folks but we just wanted to kind of explain that that bit because that's a, been a big move yeah it's exactly move. we don't want you to feel in the dark about anything either yeah cool I think the other thing we kind of wanted to talk about was just how much we learned from the first season um we were absolutely freaking blown away by the support and how many um people we had listen to the podcast download the podcast I mean honestly when we started I was like I think Stevie had a little bit higher expectations than I did, but I was like, I don't know if like 200 people listen to it. I think that'd be super rad. No, 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 Emily. You said if one person okay. listens to this, I'll be excited. Me, if I listen to it and I don't hate it, then I will call it a win. And I don't know. I haven't looked recently, but where, yeah. we're, where are we at with season Yeah, one? I think my expectations were like 5,000 because that would have been, you know, roughly 500 people an episode listening. And I was right. like, cool. And we more than, I think we doubled that, you know, by the time we hit um I think we're at like like 11,000 ish right now yeah yeah I think we hit that by the time we were we weren't even finished with the season so it was really great to see the support for sure yeah and like all over the country I mean we obviously over the world yeah yeah which that also (laughs) blew my mind but um we definitely expected like the local Montana communities to kind of pick it up but then I think our like second the community with the most listens is Bedminster, New Jersey. Yes. So I don't shout know out anyone. to Bedminster. <laughs> if you're listening and you listen to the podcast in New Jersey, yes. please email us and because we are just like, we don't understand. Neither of us know anybody there. We love you. And yeah, just email us. I'm like really excited to like hear how that all went down. Right. <laughs> um, what else, Stevie? Um, yeah, I think maybe we just talk about season two a little bit because, yep. um, you know, we went into season one, we kind of reached out to guests that we, we knew from the We Are Her community to yep. join this because we had no expectations. Really, our expectations, as Emily said, was one person. We were like, hey, <laughs> um, excuse me, um, would you like to be on this podcast? They're like, okay. But that was kind of how it went down. We didn't really have a process. Yeah. And because we had so much support, we're like, okay, how do we go about season two? Like, we should probably look for people outside of our network. Right. Um, and so we had an application. And um, picking guests was hard. You know, Super Emily hard. and I we were at her place. We opened a bottle of wine. We had typed out every single application 
excluded people's names so that we didn't have a bias in case we knew someone um and comb through every single application and unfortunately we wanted to be able to tell people hey we're looking for x y and z but because it was the first time we couldn't do that we didn't know what we were looking for we were just like well we're just gonna read these and whichever one sort of like stands out for whatever reason it the the process kind of came together organically but it was definitely a learning process for us Yeah. And so we have 12 guests again this season, like we did the first season. And I think really the applications that stood out to us were ones that, um, one either stood out, they had a story that we hadn't seen before, or two said something that we knew we needed to hear. And I know that still sounds very vague, but, um, we had an application with probably five questions. And so it's really hard to get to know someone in their story when you leave space for five questions. And, um, you know, we had some applications that gave us one or two word answers and it's really hard to, you know, be able to dissect what someone wants to talk about on a podcast when, there's not a whole lot of information there um and you know not everybody that we picked gave us paragraphs I'm not saying like that's the way to go but um you know it was a really hard process and I I think Emily and I did a good job of picking out people whose stories um you haven't heard before on the show because it's really hard to compare anybody from season two to season one yeah yes I 100% agree it's been really um neat for me to learn these stories from people I don't know because I didn't know a single person I don't think on season two I mean I maybe you know cross paths within the we are her community a couple of times but um yeah it's been it's been great I think we had like 60 people apply we had more than that I think I don't remember I just remember it was enough where I wasted a lot of paper right and (laughs) I was like damn it and I have to pick 12 so it was super hard but I do I do like I'm very excited about how it panned out and I think each story is very unique everyone's story is really unique but we I think we put together a really comprehensive season two that hopefully speaks from a lot of different angles and to a lot of different survivors out there. So Yes, exactly. And I think we really wanted to cover, um, so many survivors come to me and say, you know, because I didn't experience physical abuse or it didn't get this bad, my story's not worthy. And so we also wanted to show stories um, that amplify voices of survivors who went through emotional abuse because right. that is just as valid as someone who went through something as horrific as physical abuse too. Right. Um, and you... I have really learned through the years that there really is no comparison with stories, right? Like everything that happened to you as a survivor isn't okay, no matter the caliber of the abuse. Um, And so we do have all ends of the spectrum this season. We have emotional abuse, we have physical abuse, you know, and so I think we really wanted to highlight that too. Yeah, just kind of all of the different ways that it can manifest um, because it is different and unique for everyone. So um, yeah, season two, I think we still have a couple of episodes to record but we're pretty much like wrapping up things are getting edited we do have new theme music yes and it's in my head right now and it's so, right, so good. good we're yes. very excited about that yes. um shout out to one of my very good friends remy um an artist in arizona you can follow her on instagram her music's amazing she does a lot of really cool collaborations with different artists and all, all of her music is like very um fun to listen to she's just like really fun and has uh great beats I don't know yeah. I'm not, I don't yeah I don't know what the language is but it is like it's, yes. it, it gets it's groovy stuff um and we were really excited to have her make the music for us thanks Remy yes that's I R-E-M-M-I go look her up yes um okay I think the last piece, okay, and so Stevie was like, oh, Emily, people want to know more about you, they've been emailing, and I'm like, all right, fine. (laughs) So now we're going to do a little switcheroo, and Stevie's going to just ask me some questions. Yeah. We didn't rehearse this, so. No, um, yeah, and I want to give a a disclaimer here. Emily is very good at her role as the host, um, and so I'm going to be kind of assuming that for the next part, um, talking to Emily about her story so you can get to know her a little better. So one, please excuse use the fact that I am not as awesome as Emily at this um but um yeah I've I'm really grateful that you guys wanted to get to know Emily because Emily is an amazing human um and she doesn't give herself enough credit um she does this job fantastically she is such a good listener she gives so much support to people um so one thank you so much for wanting to get to know her and um two thanks for bearing with me as i uh take over her job i'm in the hot seat yes here we go (laughs) all right emily so 
Uh, if I've learned anything from you these uh, last 24 episodes, <laughs> I am going to let you start wherever you would like oh. to start. <laughs> um, well, I think what makes the most sense for me is to start just by maybe like talking a little bit more generally about who I am and what I do and where I'm from. And Yes, introduce yeah. yourself. Sorry, that's the first question. Come I on, I totally skipped Stevie. over it. I'm already failing. <sighs> no, it's fine. Um, so I'm originally from Phoenix, Arizona. And it's very hot there, and I was born and raised there, and I love it there very, very much. I am graduated from Arizona State University with a degree in nonprofit management, um, and then I decided to f- fuck off and move to Montana and play around and did some seasonal jobs out here. And then in 2014, I decided to stay here full time, and that's how I ended up working at an organization in Bozeman, Montana called Haven. Um, and they are a nonprofit that serves victims and survivors of domestic violence, sexual assault, stalking, uh, and sex trafficking, actually, for Gallatin County, which is a county in Montana, obviously. Um, and I worked there for five years. I did prevention and outreach. And that was, I mean, I, I don't, not to sound like a jerk, but I didn't, like, pick working at Haven because I had, like, it's, like, this burning desire and passion to, like, work in the DV world. I just sort of happened. And, gosh, I'm so grateful that um that I was able to land there because that that here I am now I mean it's become a huge part of my life a huge area that I'm super passionate about um I do feel like I have like a bit of an expertise in it just from kind of like being around in in the DV world for so long and um yeah, obviously that helps a lot in hosting this podcast, but um, yeah, really formative uh, experience for me. And now I moved to Missoula, Montana, and I am pursuing my graduate degree there in social work. So also very much of the same vein. Um, I did my first year MSW practicum with Stevie at We Are Her. So I was, I get college credit for this, which is kind of wild. Um yeah, we so that- loved having you, by the way. It's, oh, I'm, I'm sad it's coming to an end. Yeah, honestly. I'll be around. I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> um, yeah, I just won't be getting college credit for anywhere. Yeah, and so another piece that I have kind of off and on spoken to in bits and pieces um, in the community on the podcast is that I'm also a survivor, and I am a survivor of childhood sexual abuse. Um, and so there were a couple of different perpetrators, I guess is the word I'm, I'm the most comfortable with, um, in – kind of some pretty formative years the abuse kind of ended right around like 12 um but yeah I spent a lot of time not even like going there in my brain I couldn't think about it and it wasn't even so much that I was like actively trying to suppress anything I just somehow had compartmentalized that you know and like put some like little boundaries around it kind of chucked it somewhere in the back 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 corners of my mind and um as most survivors know, that's not really how that works. Or you can only do that for so long before stuff starts coming up again. And so it hasn't really been until in until the last couple of years, two, three years, that I've started to explore what that means for me, you know, explore what labels I'm even comfortable with, um, explore how much of it I'm ready to process, it, you know, on my own or in a clinical setting. Um, I definitely started I be, I did therapy for a while and I kind of had to back out of that while I am in school because it's just a lot for me right now um but just trying to figure out like what like what do I want to do with this do I need to do anything with it how has it impacted me um I, I'm kind of ready I'm, I'm just starting that journey of like of pe- piecing it all together and trying to integrate some of those experiences into my identity now um and to kind of understand like the impact it had on me um so yeah, so I this obviously, yeah, this project is near and dear to my heart and um it's been really cool to just to be a part of the We Are Her community in general and connect with so many survivors because I I'm just a podcast host. I don't I'm not, you know, <laughs> like but it it but it's like just as cathartic and beneficial for me to like l- like listen to these stories. I know that it's not necessarily true for everyone. Like for some people, it might be really, really, really triggering to hear stories. And um, th- it's not that there weren't moments that I felt triggered, but I do think that when I weigh like the pros and cons of the experience, I feel like I have benefited just as much from being able to like do this project as I have, you know, hopefully helped others. So um, yeah, it's definitely, it's a, it's a two-sided street. 
Yeah. And I feel like when you are like asking a lot of questions about like, here's where I am now, like, what do I explore? Like, I feel like as a survivor, that's something a lot of us can probably resonate with, you know, when we're at the beginning of our healing journeys, um, or even at like a step where we feel like we're in like a new part of our yeah. healing journey, like a lot of questions come up and like, that can be a very powerful time. Yes. Um, so it's, um, it's really validating, I think, to hear that you're going through that as well. Yeah, yeah, it's, yes. And I think we, it, for me, what's been really helpful too is to like, I think the culture of things are changing a little bit more where people are feeling more comfortable with like self-identifying as a survivor of some kind and also presenting as the badass professional like person that they are and that those two things don't have to, you know, be separate like they can coexist at the same time and it's okay I mean you still have to like do the work and be okay and be oh, not even okay I don't know if that's the right word but you know be in a place where you're like ready to also help others like I understand that there's like considerations there but I I don't think we have to pretend like we're also like I'm a podcast host and an advocate and I'm also a survivor and it's okay to say that and I mean statistically speaking we know that so many people are affected by this. So I don't understand, you know, I mean, I do understand, but I personally am coming to a place where I'm definitely more comfortable with it. And I see kind of the culture of things changing and more people feeling comfortable um, kind of, yeah, like ex expressing those labels or, you know, I don't know what, what the words I'm trying to say. Our words are hard. But okay. I, yeah. think, I think I get what you're saying. Yeah, you know? for sure. Um, two, I want to bring up a point if you're comfortable talking about yeah. it. And um, I believe it's episode two when you talk to Nicole. Um, she is also an advocate and she brings up a point where sometimes it's really hard to tell our stories when, ad when we're an advocate. And I was wondering if you wanted to like touch about touch on your experience about that. Yeah, it is. It is like and I think that um, it can. It depends on the context, right? The who, what, when, where, and why matters. And, you know, I don't believe in, like, blanket statements about almost anything. And so I think that, you know, in my role at Haven as an advocate there, if I'm on the support line, that is not an appropriate role for me to, you know, share my experience as a survivor with somebody else. But one thing I really like about We Are Her in particular is that it is a, it's an organization of survivors for survivors. and it has its roots there. And so it's okay to say like, I'm a survivor and I'm the founder and I'm a survivor and I'm the podcast host. And when I hold survivor meetups, I generally don't talk about my story a lot, but I am very comfortable in those spaces being like, yeah, I am also a survivor. That's what brought me into this space. I do have like a working knowledge of what that experience can feel like. And I hope that that's comforting in some way. Um, and so I, I love the like peer to peer model of we are her. Um, and I think it takes all kinds, you know, places like Haven have their wheelhouse that is so needed and um, other domestic violence organizations or co college campus sexual assault organizations, all of those spaces are very much needed. And I think that we are kind of in a unique position where we're filling this niche where a lot of survivors are like, I just want to talk to another survivor who gets it and I want to feel like I belong and I want a felt sense of community with people who are okay you know identifying as a survivor and uh I, I feel really lucky that I can be you know on the leadership team and also be I feel safe being like yeah me too yeah you know and I don't always talk a lot in details about stuff but I feel like I can say that and it's like it's safe and people are like I don't know there's like a solidarity there that I really yeah think is special yeah and I appreciate you saying like I can share what I'm comfortable sharing too because I think um yeah no matter like how much or how little you want to share like that's totally up to you and I think that's a message that we need to keep letting people know like yeah and you did a really great um workshop on the power of sharing your story yeah. for us um if you haven't watched it you should check it out I'll link it below but um sharing your story can be anything from like writing it down in your journal yep. just literally thinking about it in your head yeah. sharing with you know a friend that you trust or like doing something like this like the podcast like there is a huge spectrum of what sharing your story looks yep. like um yeah and the amount that you want to share and everything and so um yeah that's okay like there's no right or wrong way to share. Totally. Yeah. And for me right now, the most helpful thing is just to be able to finally just start saying like, I am a survivor of childhood sexual abuse. And I didn't say that for a really long time. That is like the first most empowering step. And I'm sort of just like 
I'm marinating in that for a little while. <laughs> and if you don't get the reference, then you need to go listen to the Q&A episode. That's all I'm going to say about marinating. <laughs> um, but I do, I've been marinating in this like new comfort of being able to use labels and sort of self-identify my own experience. And um, we'll just see where it goes from there. Yeah. So what does marinating look like for you? What Because mm-hmm. I feel like that's such a broad term. And I, I, I think with healing, it's so easy to be like, Oh, well, I meditate and people are like, well, what does that look like? You know, like, so what does marinate mean? Marinate for me just means that I sit with something. I don't always, um, I just allow certain, like, I allow myself to just, like, be in the moment, um, be comfortable, or not even comfortable. That's because sometimes you aren't comfortable. I think it's just, like, sitting with whatever step or whatever place I'm in, and I don't, try and force myself or I try not to like force myself to like push forward or pull back or move sideways or maneuver I'm like just don't like stop moving and just sit and marinate and usually if I give myself enough space and like grace to just be in whatever it is that I'm in whether that's a high emotional state or a low emotional state or a blank state or you know like like just being able to say the words, I'm a childhood sexual abuse survival, survivor, and then just sit with that for a while. And usually, I gain some sort of clarity with a given enough time of, like, where I'm naturally trying to go instead of trying to, like, force it. I know that's all very weird woo-woo language, but hopefully that makes some sort of sense. So maybe, like, a follow-up question that could be, like, what foundations of healing did you have so that you could get to the place of, like, marinating? Yeah, so I think um, shit kind of hit the fan for me a few years ago with um, some anxiety issues and panic issues that I was having, and I was like, it was it was very much affecting like my quality of life and my like day to day existence and my ability to just like do regular day to day shit. And um, in true Emily fashion, I was like, "What is this about? You <laughs> know, like this is this is coming out of nowhere." And I went to counseling and like over some, I was like, this isn't going out of nowhere. This is something coming up for me. And I don't feel, th- I'm a very rational person and I don't always feel things in, in, um, in words in my head. Like for me, it's oftentimes very much like a felt sense, like in my body. So for me, I was having a lot of body sensations, um, dry mouth, racing heart, sweaty palms, feeling like I'm going to pass out. I was started like compulsively checking my pulse. Like, because for some reason I was body scanning all the time, trying to, like, figure out if I was dying or not, because it felt like I was dying. I started slipping a little bit into, like, an area of hypochondria, which I learned is because when you feel so bad in your own body, your brain will start to rationalize that feeling. And so to make sense of it somehow. And I was like, oh, I must have a brain tumor, MS, or, like, you know, something. That's where my brain was going. It was getting pretty out of control. Um, And so I finally did reach out for help, which was really hard for me. Um, but that was a catalyst, you know, I didn't have a choice anymore. My body was like out of control. Um, and so I started taking some steps to really figure out like what was going on with me and counseling. I did that for probably two years. Um, I started running a lot, which was super helpful to help bring me back into my body and for me to see like, oh, my body is safe and it, it, I'm not dying (laughs) and I can run four miles and like I am healthy and I am okay. Um, yoga, I used to not be able to go to yoga because being in my body didn't feel good. And yoga is all about like being in your body. And so I was like, this is not safe right now. But over time, it became something that just felt so good. Like when I started feeling better in my body again, to just like stretch into my body and feel every sensation and feel safe back in my own little home of my, of my shell. Um, so yoga, meditating honestly being in this grad program has been really great um because it's all about mental mental health and social injustice and you know the things that people experience in in the context of their lives and how that forms who they are and I had to write 5,000 million billion trillion reflection papers which got a little old but also was super helpful to just kind of be like who am I why am I like this why do I behave this way why do I think this way um so a lot of stuff I don't like writing so that's not a me thing. I don't know what it is. I can't focus long enough to do that. Um, I know that's been really helpful for a lot of people. Oh, my dog. Yes. I was wondering when Chugs was going to come up. Gosh, wow. I can't believe it took so long. 
She's actually laying right next to me on the floor as we as we speak. She's always here. She's, She's such a great little podcast guest. I know. Yes. She's definitely I know a lot of people like roll their eyes about like the ESA emotional support animal thing, but she definitely is for me and it's um it's real. Super real. Um I feel so much safer when I'm with her. And I it's just she's she's soft and she looks at me with unconditional love and she actually used to, uh, my counselor, because I would bring her to my counseling sessions, my counselor's like, you know, I don't know if you notice this, but like when you start getting anxious and like you start, your body language changes, she'll, she'll like watch you. And, and I'm like, huh. So then I started trying to notice that. And like, if she was staring at me with like weird, worried eyes, I'm like, what? And then I'm like, oh my God, I am like escalating and I didn't even realize it. And she would like tell me before I was like getting out of control so we have a very special relationship um yes yes you do I can testify to that I feel like we should put some pictures of her we got some things. really good ones of her, like right next to the podcast mic. So yeah, those ones are gonna go up yep. for sure. You're yes. welcome, everybody. <laughs> um, and yeah, so I'm doing I'm doing much better right now. I mean, I'm definitely I think feeling really anxious along with probably most people in America right now, um, given the current climate of COVID nineteen and a lot of the uh, the racial tension in our country and s- some of that coming to a head, which I think we or her has been doing a really good job in speaking out about. And is very important to us, um, uh, as it should be for everyone. But um, yeah, so, you know, we're living in strange times, but we are, I'm just glad we still got to do the project, even though it feels like. Yeah. Um, and I think you said this, you know, while we were recording, but, you know, it's just as important to share our stories and keep healing together, even though we don't know the state of the world and the unknowns are really scary right now. Yeah. I found a lot of comfort. In just being like, oh, are you freaking out? Oh, me too. Okay, let's freak out together. And like, yeah, we're just, we're all trying to figure this out. So, um, okay, I'm going to stop talking now. Yeah, well, <laughs> um, yeah, I, I'm obviously, I've, you're one of my heroes. Um, I always aspire to be more like you. That's like one of my, like one of my mantras is like, what would Emily do? Or what would Emily say? Um, And I think she really kind of showed that to us here. Like she's very well-spoken about her healing journey and very clearly is very in tune with like what her body is telling her. And I think, um, you know, those are important healing tips. If you're struggling during your healing journey, kind of, you know, if that sounds comfortable for you, like what is your body telling you? Like what, you know, feels comfortable for you? If something doesn't feel right, like listen to that. And I think Emily's really good at that. Um, you know, I've kind of learned that from her over the years and I, you know, just had therapy last week and my therapist was like, well, where do you feel that anger in your body? And I was like, I don't know. I'm really bad at listening to my body. And then I like actually sat with it because yeah, I was like, and I was like, I marinated. I did. I Hmm. marinated. How about that? Yes. And I was like, it's in my jaw. So now it's like, oh, like now that's telling me some things about like, oh, like that has to do with like my voice or something. I'm not going to get into it. This isn't about me, but, um, listen to your body and like what it saying you know right. like it's it's very powerful I, but I it's do hard that. it's easy to ignore it's a skill to learn how to tune in and like figure out what it is saying um it could be it's like it's a practice you know it doesn't just happen it takes a lot of like intentional uh kind of pra- like practice and, and there are a, a bunch skill, of different yeah. ways to do it but it's but. not a skill you just have to learn you have to almost relearn it too as a survivor yeah. because so often like our guts tell us one thing and yep. we shut it down because of you know the external forces of the abuse or the violence yes. that we're facing and so you have to relearn that and when you have to relearn yeah. a skill it's really really hard and our bodies haven't always been safe and they might not always feel safe and so like yeah, like I said, you know, doing yoga and stuff at, didn't always wasn't always a safe option for me because I was always body scanning and being in my body was a horrifying place to be. So, um, you yeah, like please know you don't have to like rush in, in into like a room after listening to this and be like, what am I feeling? <laughs> Talk yeah. to me, body. Yes. Um, but yeah, I mean, there's a ton of great resources out there for that. Maybe we can. Put some of that up on her. Yeah, I think I'm going to start like a hashtag Emilyism oh boy. this summer with the podcast and just, you know, throw the Emily quotes and the Emily tips out there. But okay. um, yeah, so Emily, really quick before we yes. we end, um, like you always ask at the end, if oh. you had to share a piece of advice for a survivor, what would you want them to know? I mean, 
I know it sounds like I feel like this is gets said all the time. Two of the big ones, you know, listen to your guts, um, trust your intuition. You know yourself better than anyone. And also you're not alone. And, you know, that is obviously just a continuing theme throughout the podcast and throughout. That's the whole point of We Are Her is to make sure that survivors know they aren't alone. They have a place to go. There are places to receive you. Um, It can look a million different ways. It's on your terms. But it's so helpful to 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 not feel alone or isolated or crazy um, or stuck in your head. And um, yeah, I just think that that's so important. And that's what we're here for. So we've got a bunch of different resources for that. I don't want to like take up more time getting into them, but just go to the website, weareher.net. Yes. Um, yeah. No, this uh, feels very like full circle for me because you were the first person to really kind of instill a lot of those messages for me. So, um, you know, for anyone out there, if Emily's the first person telling you this to, you know, it's she's a good first person to hear it from. It stays with you for sure. Yes. Come on over. Come on over, baby. And you kind of look J Lo y right now. I wish everyone could see you. Uh, Stevie's looking hot. I miss I I miss the hoops. I should have worn them God. yesterday, but I have Get the, the high hoops pony. back in. I have the sports bra yeah. with like the flannel yeah. over. Yeah, it's it's like early J Lo. Yes, it's like early two thousands J Lo. But... I was very much channeling like my Latina half today. Uh huh. So. Yeah, I feel it. I love it. I'm in. I'm channeling dirty, disgusting. I just moved out of my house. Uh, look no I mean Emily still looks great she's got this cute yellow headband that I want to steal so um well with that thank you everyone so much um again please reach out to us on Instagram you can email Emily directly you can yeah Emily at weareher.net you can email me directly Stevie at weareher.net Stevie just spelled like Stevie Nicks um you know find us on the website wherever whatever works for you we're there um and we want to hear from you we we love all of you we're here Chugs is here we yes. should get her own email. I know. I feel like we need to send, like, a, a signed postcard from Chugs. Oh, <laughs> we're in. She's on the leadership team. Yes. Um, okay. That's a wrap, everybody. We're excited for season two. We love you. That's it. Amen. <laughs>